Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, Paramount could soon have new owners. We'll tell you who and what the offer is. Also, Comcast has been hit with another proposed class action related to his massive data breach. And this comes just as they're reporting some very bad numbers, lots of losses in both TV and internet subscribers. We'll tell you what's happening and more in a minute. First though, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people helping us grow. And you can find a link to every story I talk about down in the show notes and in the first pinned comment, you can find a link there so you can read them for yourself. All right, let's dive into it. Starting off with Paramount has um, received a new offer from Skydance Media. Now Skydance Media is a well-known production company with some very big movie names behind them. Um, they've actually had a partnership with Paramount for several years now to help fund and distribute some of their movies they produce. Well, now Skydance Media has reportedly made a bid to buy National Amusement, which owns like 77% of the voting shares in Paramount. We own 77% of the voting shares on the board. You own the board. You own the company, basically, is how it works. Okay, maybe not own the board. That's not quite the right terminology, but you get a lot of pick on who's on it and how it goes. So with this, though, Paramount's um, company, National Amusement, which is owned by the Redstone family, has basically said, we want out of owning Paramount. They have reportedly um, started the process of putting up for auction. Now, Skydance Media, Warner Brothers Discovery were reportedly talking to these um, the owners before they agreed to go to auction. The auction hasn't happened, could be canceled, they could accept this deal. We'll have to keep a very close eye on this. This is going to go through a lot of regulatory um, processes to get approved. And But what's very clear is that Paramount's probably going to be sold here this year. Um, when this year? That's the big question. Could be in a few months, could be in a few weeks, could be maybe late this year. We'll see how the whole process go through goes. These things often take a lot of due diligence, a lot of time, but if an offer is on the table, that probably means a lot of the due diligence is already over and they're making a um, what they consider to be a reasonable offer for the company. We'll see how that plays out, but uh, leave me a comment, let me know. Would you like to see Paramount sold? If you could pick anyone to buy the company, who would it be? Who would you want to own Paramount? Uh, Warner Bros. Discovery, Skydance Media, some investment firms, somebody out of left field, Comcast, Disney. Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, speaking of Comcast, Comcast has been hit with another class action lawsuit proposal. Uh, Comcast last year had a massive data breach exposing a ton of people's um, information. Change your passwords. Watch those credit card bills. Uh, but um, with this, there's, another, there's a growing number of people filing what they want to be a class action lawsuit to punish Comcast for how it handled it. We'll see how this plays out. I'll be interested to see if this does go to class action um, with the judge rules. You know, it's kind of, day breaches are kind of sadly becoming reality. Uh, and I would encourage you to accept that they're happening and protect yourself. Get a credit monitoring. Be very careful about reusing passwords. Be cautious. I know that sounds defeatist, like, oh, Luke, you shouldn't just accept that day breaches are happening. No, I shouldn't. But I'm also a realist here and just say, hey, probably going to happen. Protect yourself by not reusing passwords, monitoring your credit, monitoring your credit cards. Be very careful out there when you're doing that. Speaking of Comcast, Comcast this week reported its earnings call on Thursday, yesterday. And uh, for the fourth quarter of 2024, they lost 389,000 TV customers and 34,000 internet customers in the fourth quarter. This works out to a little over 4,200 internet or TV customers canceling every single day. Um, millions of customers canceled Comcast last year. Now, like I said, for years we've heard that internet would um, just, oh, you know, TV's losing subscribers, internet replace them. They'll make their money on internet. And while they are still making good money in the internet, we're seeing that early drop, um, just a little drop here in the core cutting 2.0, which is this idea of canceling cable internet and going to new options for your internet service, 5G, fiber, other options out there. Now, I've already seen comments on this story about, oh, that's not a lot, who cares? 34,000 people in, in 92 days, that's not a lot. No, but this is kind of exactly what they said about core cutting 1.0, back in the early days. Oh, you know, yeah, they lost like 100,000, not a big deal. They'll get them back. You know, these are people, um, you know, the economy, they're just trying to save some money, but once it's better, they'll get, they'll come back. And they never did. It just kind of grew and grew and grew and grew um, uh, 
now we're seeing Corcoran being the dominant way people watch television. It would not surprise me the same thing happens. Comcast's response to this so far has been, hey, we'll just offer faster internet and more money. Try to be far faster than these cheaper discount internet services that while they're cheaper, they're slower. And that may be good for some people, but I think the vast majority of people, as long as it streams Netflix and YouTube and they can check their email, I think they're fine. Yeah, there are gamers out there that are really important to them. Uh, they're content creators like I am, uploading content who want good upload speed. But I think the vast majority of people are happy with you know, 300, 400 down. They don't need a gig or two gigs. So I think Comcast could be facing similar issues to what they had with Core Cutting 1.0. And we're just in the early days of this and maybe at the end of 2024, 2025 sometime, we'll really start seeing the pain grow on this. We'll see, let me know. Have you canceled Comcast internet? Why? Yeah, let me know. All right, let's race through a bunch of stories here. Starting off with late last year in November, Con uh, uh, Walmart excuse me, released a $14.99 Google TV HD streaming stick. This was a very nice streaming stick, a little underpowered, but very nice for the $14.99. Well, they never really announced it, they just sold it on the website. And it seems like it's done. It's been removed from their Walmart searches. If you have a link saved or you find it through Google, you can find it, but it's listed as out of stock. Very similar to what Walmart's done with other on devices that they discontinue that's kind of make it vanish off of the search engines. And I wonder if this was just kind of like they built it, they had it, they're like, let's just release it because we have it in the warehouse. We'll sell these out and call it good. Because they also have the $19.88 4K version that's far more powerful with more RAM um, with it, for the extra few dollars, you get a much better streaming player. That one's still for sale. And I think what we're seeing here is Walmart has decided to focus on the 4K rather than the HD. But HD, maybe it comes back. You can find it kind of expensive on eBay. Be careful there. But Walmart is no longer selling it. Um, if you are a Fubo customer, there's a new feature out there. Fubo announced generated AI-generated headlines. This is an idea that Fubo will... Now use AI to monitor news channels like CNN, Fox, and others, which will allow you to generate headlines in a news roll to tell you exactly what that channel is talking about right now, and you can click on it and join it. Kind of a cool feature. They're the first ones to do this, but it allows them to um, give you AI-generated headlines based on what the channel is currently covering, give you an idea of what's happening so you can jump in or not, rather than just seeing the show title uh, which, especially during news programs, isn't very helpful if you just kind of want to see what's happening. This AI-generated headlines will help with that. Kind of a cool feature. I think Fubo is the first one to do that. I haven't heard anybody else to do it. All right, question. Netflix has 32 million monthly um, customers on its ad-supported plan. Uh, are you one of them? Have you gone down to the ad-supported, the $6.99 plan to save money? Netflix is definitely pushing people from the ad-free basic to this plan make it more enticing. But somebody asked a question here that I think is really good. How many of these 23 million people are actually getting it free? Um, we're seeing several of the deals for free Netflix now switch over to the ad supported plan for new ones. Are, could this number be inflated a little bit by having so many people on the free one? Let me know. I, I, that's a question. We'll try to find the answer, but it's a great question out there. You know, how many of these are actually paying customers? Uh, speaking of paying customers, Peacock added 3 million new subscribers but lost $825 million in the fourth quarter of 2023. Uh, now, this is slightly down. In the third quarter, they added 4 million. In the um, fourth quarter, they added uh, in the third quarter, they added uh, 4 million. In the fourth quarter, they added 3 million. That's a bit of a brain teaser when you're trying to read and talk as a dyslexic person. Uh, but uh, Comcast is now has 31 million subscribers to Peacock. We'll see how many of those stay subscribed. There was an NFL game that was a Peacock exclusive at the end of December. There was also a playoff game in January. I know this doesn't include January numbers, but you do wonder how many people subscribe knowing that the NFL playoffs were going to have one also. Um, with this, there's also been doing a lot of big promotional Black Friday offers and more to drive up those subscriber numbers with it. I still think outside of sports and live content, Peacock suffers the lack of a killer show that you know that must watch TV that everybody wants to watch. Maybe they'll find it. We'll see. They are building a nice back catalog. They do have some shows in the works, like the new Battlestar Galactica they hope to get out. 
We'll see what happens. But Peacock still well behind some of his competitors at Max, Disney Plus, and Paramount Plus when it comes to total number of subscribers. And I really think that has to be laid on the feet of outside of sports. There's not a lot of content there that is, oh my gosh, have you seen this? It doesn't have this Marvel. It doesn't have the Star Wars or Star Trek or some of the content from HBO. We'll keep a close eye on that. But let me know what you think. Sling TV free stream. Um, I know they added the DVR this week. By the way, if you're struggling to get that, some people said that their existing DVR um, or their existing Sling TV uh, free stream accounts didn't get the DVR, but new accounts, if they made a new one, did, FYI. But Sling free stream also added 15 new free channels. A bunch of music channels with a, um, were added and a collection of other channels out there. If you want to see the full list, check out the shows down below. And lastly, we reported earlier this week that Sinclair was selling its Stir streaming service. This was an ad-free streaming service with live TV and on demand to compete with uh, Pluto TV and Tubo, Tubi. Excuse me. Um, Sinclair has confirmed to Core Cars News that the sale is complete. The new owners have taken control of it. One note with that, with this, they've shut down all live TV streaming. Everything is now on demand only for now. We'll see what the new owners do. A lot of the content seems to have not transferred because um, the this, this selection is a lot smaller than it used to be. So check that out. Um, let's jump into the question of the day. If you um, have a question for me, you want me to answer, leave a comment down below. Start it off with something like a question for Luke. So I know it's something you wanted me to answer here. Uh, Today's question is, does the Bally Sports and Amazon streaming deal include the three Major League Baseball teams that Bally Sports has been planning to drop, or are these teams still going elsewhere? There are still reports that Bally Sports intends to drop teams. Um, it's important to note that while, yes, Amazon has offered to basically buy the streaming rights, invest in uh, Bally Sports with that, and become the new streaming home for the streaming version, that subscription direct-to-consumer streaming package, currently known as Bally Sports Plus, will now be a channel on Amazon. You subscribe through Amazon and watch it on Amazon. Caveat here. The judge has approved it. Hasn't happened at the time of this recording, or at least not to my knowledge. And with this, Major League Baseball has kind of come out and said, hey, we got blindsided by this. Um, they put their contract that they're still doing with Bally Sports on hold. They indefinitely uh, suspended the hearing they were supposed to have. So we'll have to see. Will we see some big changes here or not? Uh, with this deal, it's really kind of what the judge does. The judge could reject this. Amazon could not stream any Bally Sports. Could Bally Sports drop more teams? Yeah. Could they try to keep these teams out with the money from Sinclair and Amazon? If the judge approves, I'm sure they would love to. We'll see what happens here. This is really now coming down to what the judge wants to do. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Be safe. And don't forget, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. It really does help us.